Happy Saturday, everyone. I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint. Let me show you here on the easel this red boat on a lake with these wonderful water reflections. This is actually a lot easier than you might think to do. And I feel like if I explain it to you step by step, you'd be surprised at how well you can do this yourself. This is uh, what the third boat that I've taught on the channel and the boats have always really given students a really good result. So I'm excited to share this with you today. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi guys. He is the one that does our intros. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Hello. <laughs> and he also <laughs> switches the cameras and he makes sure that there's sound and if this, like whatever's going on with the system, he's like, I actually don't have any idea what he does, but I know I couldn't do the show without him. And it's very technical over here. And there are many buttons, which all of which are fine confusing. I did, however, find the light button recently. Did you? Yeah. Oh, so that's I'm right. independent on the lights. That's I can right. turn on and turn off my lights by myself. <laughs> they can, I can do that. I can turn lights on and on and off. If you saw the 35 buttons I have to choose from, that's, a, that's actually quite an accomplishment. I've got my sippy sippy. <laughs> I've got my good creative spirit in. I'm hoping you're finding this Saturday wonderful and restorative and relaxing. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> Let's put down our worries. And jump right on into this project because I know we're going to feel better after we're done painting this boat. You guys ready? Mm. Come on. All right. So we have our reference here. References are wonderful because references help us know what we're going to paint. But of course, if you go to the website, which is in that description below, you're going to see a link and it's going to take you there. It's going to tell you color exchanges if you don't have a particular color to let you know other ones you could use. It's got uh, traceable there that you can download. And I'm demoing today how we're going to use that traceable. And it has the reference picture if you'd like to download it. Plus the link to the other two other boat paintings just in case this is the most fun you've ever had. And you have to do more boats. All right, so right here, I've got a nine by 12 canvas and I put some wishes on it like we like to do. And the first one is, and sadly I have to say this, is, this has been an ongoing thing I've been seeing in groups and, and online where people have lost their Sherpas and Sherclaws, their studio companions have been crossing the Rainbow Bridge. So just wishing love and support and well-being to humans that have lost their beautiful treasure companions. Um, also, we've been seeing a lot of stuff around breast cancer. So as always, it, it, and if you've been here a while, you know, John and I are n do not like breast cancer and, um, we want to see it stamped out. Yeah, absolutely. So cure, treatment, compassion, well-being, and support for anyone that is going through that, uh, right now. And then for those of you that are feeling a little creatively blocked. I know that's something that comes up. Maybe it's been a little while since you painted. Maybe something happened that kind of broke your heart a little bit and it's been hard to get back into that creative spirit. I'm wishing you a strike of inspiration so that you can have back something that I know is super restorative and helpful. So any of you that are creatively blocked, I hope it becomes an open flood and lets all that inspiration in. All right, it's a nine by 12 surface. Over here, we have some colors. I like colors. I will tell you what they are, and they are also in the description. I am, as you know, testing the acrylic uh, acrylic by Sunlayer. So this is the <laughs> pro paint from that. So that's what's going on with that. I am enjoying that. But just know they did send me this paint. So that's that is the relationship. Okay. So We're using had, free paint. Huh? We're using free paint. Yes, yeah, free paint. And his artist did seriously. <laughs> <laughs> we just realized how old our car was today. All right. Cadmium red, Mars black, quidacridone magenta, cad yellow medium, diox purple, thalo green, thalo blue, and titanium white are the colors I'm going to be using to create this painting today. To start it though, I'm going to pull out, you know how I like me, my thalo turquoise color, my thalo blue, and my thalo green. And I am going to paint the base of this with a mix of these two. So let's put out our paints. I'm going to talk about this uh, just because maybe you'd never seen it before. When you're squeezing out a tube of paint, you're going to want to squeeze from the back and press it down firmly into your surface and squeeze it off. See how that gets all the paint off of it? Mm. And then immediately return the cap. Ideally, you're supposed to take like a baby wipe and wipe them off, but I never do that. However, I suffer because I don't. Just so you know. Like later, and these haven't given me a problem yet, but I do get problems because I don't uh, get a chance to do that. So you see me squeezing it out from behind and pressing it down. And that's how I get that. Now, I'm just saying that because somebody asked the other day, how do you squeeze a tube of paint? And you know what? 
if you're new to painting, that's something that would be reasonable you might not know. Never feel bad because you don't know something in art. You know, we're not supposed to be born uh, knowing everything. We and come here and learn it. You know what's tough about art hmm. is that if you don't nothing, know something. Nothing is tough about art. It is a joy and everyone should paint. You don't know what's tough what, about what, art. What, yeah, but I mean, one of the things that I think that oftentimes are made difficult in art mm -hmm. is how quickly people are to shame you for not having knowledge. Yeah, that is something I do not enjoy in some parts of the art community. I would say for the most part, artists are open-hearted, helpful individuals that just want other people to have an easy time in their studio. But on occasion, you will find a know-it-all who is a bit shamey. It's like, I doesn't have anything that. to like, do with anything other than them. Yeah, so that's, that's the only thing that I find tough is yeah. like, Man. So if you don't know stuff like acrylic is thinned with water, yeah. it's a reasonable thing not to know if you've never painted with it before. Totally reasonable. Speaking of, I have glass water out here to thin yeah. my acrylic paint. Now this here, this is an artist knife. This is a long t tapered trowel here with a, with a nice deep crank. Mm -hmm. This is from my Art Sherpa line of pout knives. They're not expensive. They're very inexpensive, in fact. And they're red, which is uh, not for any particular artistic reason other than pretty. Because sometimes stuff just needs to be pretty, yo. That is its purpose. So see how I'm just mixing and incorporating these two together? Now, if you don't have an artist knife, you can very carefully mix those paints with your brush. Mm. This is just a way to save a little money and save a little paint by doing it that way. Now, I'm going to grab my big. This is, this is probably overkill for this part of the project, but I'm teaching. You can get a regular, reasonable size brush. This is my number 30 Art Sherpa brush. I'm going to drag this bad boy off in the water so I'm not keeping too much extra water. And I'm going to just go ahead and take those little wishes. I use watercolor pencil to put them in. Crond Osh, in fact, so it's like really nice. <laughs> but um, I'm going to blend those in so that they don't bleed through my surface. And also this is going to kind of almost prime my canvas a little bit to take the paint I'm about to put on there. So you're going to see me pull out the color and I'm going to flip the brush and pull out the color. That flip loads the paint into the belly of the brush and is why my paint goes maybe sometimes a little bit further than yours might at home. There are several factors that impact your uh, ability to cover a canvas or surface with your paint. And if you're struggling with that, like if you're like, man, I am using the paint. I, I feel like I'm doing it the same, but I'm not getting the result. Go to my website and search under videos, Technique Tuesday. And you're going to want to find the video that's water brush paint. And it, mm. that's all it talks about is just those problems that students have, that regular people have, getting that paint off their brush onto the canvas effectively. Because... That can be a challenge. Mm, yeah. All Especially right. when you, you're first learning how to do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll eventually get it. But these weird little dances of relationships between the paint that you're painting yep. with, the surface that you're painting on, I'm gonna the water in. hardness that you have, there's a lot going on. See hmm? right here? Hmm. Look, what I'm, look what I found. That's that bead of paint that oh, yeah. builds up on the edge. Of your boards. That's of your it. board. And you have That's to be the careful. annoyance of the board. Uh, I like the boards for storage yeah. and and economy, but I do not like them for the bead. <laughs> now, I'm rinsing out my brush, and I'm getting the paint pretty thoroughly out of it. I'm dragging off the extra water, and I'm going to lay this flat. And I really, 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 really want to remind you that after every single painting session, you do need to wash your brushes out with soap and water if you want to preserve them because the acrylic paint can dry on them and ruin them. It's just something you might not know. I'm going to dry my canvas. Okay. So while she's drying that, I'm going to say make sure you use your hair dryer or air mover or whatever it is on the lowest heat setting because heat is not good for acrylic paint. Just none of it. It causes color shift and shrinkage and it softens the paint. Now, of course, it's not as bad on pro paints, but it does happen, especially in student paints. And if you're using a student paint, you want to make sure to not cause anything to go against you. Um, so boom. be sure. Use those. Sorry, uh, I, I got all, like all cheeky. I'm like, boom. I'm going to put out my paint now. I'm going to put out all my colors. 
So do we have any questions while I'm putting out my paint colors? Because it's not really a speed activity unless you've got me on a speed paint. Which hopefully you guys are liking our music art experiences. I've really appreciated the positive commentary that many of you have left. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I I really, I know John's proud of them. I'm proud of them. And I just appreciate the support. Yeah, they were just chatting about that. But uh, now I was saying over the Anacredo little break. Weekend. I'll just say at the end. After oh, put, go, put, tell me what you're putting out. You know what? I'm going to do it at the end after it's all out. Ask me the question. Okay. So, <laughs> well, while you were while you were away, I was saying that uh, student paints tend to react more strongly to heat and things like that than pro paints. And can you talk about some of the reasons why you use a pro paint? So, the reason you would use a pro paint, and I almost wish we didn't call them pro paints, but we do. So that's the reality of it. Um, is that they don't have weird fillers. They don't have things that really shouldn't be in acrylic paint. The pigment loads are very high and the quality of the pigment that's used is significantly better. Um, also the binders are generally better and the paint will like perform more as you would expect, mm. whether it's a fluid paint or heavy body paint, that is really something that impacts your result as a painter. And sometimes I will see people feel real frustrated at the painting result they're getting, but it's really not um, them. It is the materials that they're using are just not functioning as they might possibly want. Let's sip our coffee. So that's what's happening to you. And those well, are the differences. Oh, and cost. There's a big difference in cost. But I, I promise you the margins on paint are super slim. It's just pigment is expensive. It's been a thing through the whole history of art. In yeah. fact, <laughs> certain artists used to like pocket pigment and like, stick their fingers in it and bring it home and like try to get it on oils. That's how expensive it is. So it's your troubles are the troubles of artists throughout aeons of history. Now, I haven't seen the movie. Yes. But I think that Pikachu may be a long lost sibling of mine. <sighs> As I sip my piping hot coffee. I have seen the movie and Pikachu is much cooler than you. Probably. I'm not that cool. Coffee is life. <laughs> Karen Scott sent me the cutest video about coffee being life and this little girl saying these cute coffee things. I think if I was going to be <sighs> any of those things, I'd be the, the little turtle that's blue. Uh, I like him. You'd be the turtle that's blue? It'd I don't like know, maybe squirtle. Charmander. <laughs> I, I, don't I don't mean to judge you and everything. I don't know so, them well enough, so I couldn't say. <laughs> if you haven't seen the Pokemon movie, I'm not a movie reviewer. I'm just a mom of three kids that goes to a lot of movies. Dude, shockingly good. Go see it. All right. So okay, don't write me angry if you don't agree with me. I'm going to take my traceable. This is provided to you on the website. I have mine on transfer paper, traceable paper. And underneath it, I have a product called Serral Paper, which I love. It is in the description. If you don't have it, you can just rub the back of your uh, printout with chalk or pencil. I'm going to tape this right here, well placed on my surface. Right, and then I'm going to trace. I cut these a little bit long, so I'm ha that's why I'm having problems. Like here, I cut these. Where can I put this where it's not going to give me grief? There we go. I cut it a little bit long, and that's why I'm struggling here. It's, it's a like thing a that Rubik's happens. Cube puzzle. Hmm? It's like a Rubik's cube puzzle. It, it's only, certainly an experience that I'm having at the moment. Only not designed to be nearly as challenging. So basically, with a tracing or a transfer, you have a line or contour image, and you use uh, one of several methods to take the image from one uh, sheet or material and get it on to another. So like, you could use projection, um, you could use the graphite method, you could use these transfer papers. There's a lot of ways to do it. Gritting is and known to do it but there's a lot of ways to get an image onto your canvas i, I love that it's none the of them are considered considered cheating in real art circles i'm always like really tripped out when any actual artist says that like cheating like okay I, I love that there's a graphite method i just wish there was a chalk maneuver why do you wish there was a chalk maneuver i don't know because it's like if if there's going to be a method, I feel like a maneuver should be thrown in there. Well, uh, hmm, I will try to think of something that could be a maneuver in art, and then I will <laughs> then I will call it the John maneuver. How's that? Okay. <laughs> John hands maneuver, something like that. So hopefully, if you did this correctly, what will happen is you'll have a nice little outline of your boat. You do have an outline of a yellow boat. Of your boat, 
And if you have extra lines that are places that you don't want, I just want to show you why I like serral paper. It just, you just erased it. Yep. I just take a wet brush and I go over the lines that I don't want and it dissipates. I only use the yellow and the white because I found the red and the blue were, were bleeding through. Mm. And not like giving me a result I like. Now, the water. The water is a very interesting little beast here because what we've got is a kind of base tone which is showing a reflection of the sky. Water reflects sky and water reflects colors and the ripples are like a fluid mirror that are catching different things and shooting those colors back at you. That's what you're actually painting. So I've got to get my base sky color and then I'm going to do a pattern of reflections in there. I'm also going to do my boat right in these reds. Now there's a lot of strategies I could use to get this painting done. But what I'm going to do is doing something called blocking it in, which I, means I use basic values, like a couple of values, to get the overall painting worked in, and then I start pulling out the details. And that gives me a really good result. So that's what I'm going to start with. All right. Yo. And I think I'm going to start with, I just grabbed this randomly, a number eight, bright, ruby satin. Uh, I like these. They're made for acrylic paint. So they're, they're happy making for me. And I'm going to take a little of my uh, uh, CAD red out here. And I'm going to grab the smidgiest smidge of my blue at first. And the reason it's a smidgy smidge is I do want to be able to come back and give a couple pops of brighter color. But I'm going to paint this everywhere I perceive that I have this bright red, which goes to about mid-boat. You guys see that? I'm working the edge of my brush. You can see that right there as I'm dragging, 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 dragging. See how that's pulling the paint out? And yeah. then when I want to fill in a big area, I'm brushing on the wide of the brush. And I'm going to bring this back and pull this into the boat. Pulling, pulling, pulling. Come here. And covering up there. Now, there is a bit of a lip that's red that goes around, so I definitely want to get that. I'm going to come and go here. Now, something, this would be an area Trendy. where if you were painting student paints, you would be struggling maybe a little bit. Right? So I'm going to come here just along that edge. And then I'm going to do an interesting thing. Because there's a bit of this, um, did I forget my yellow ochre paint? I don't, I don't know. Can, did you? Can someone check the description? I may have forgotten. Oh, I'm going to just put an orange up here. I'll check. I may have put it away. Like sometimes getting ready for a show, I'll like put stuff away like absentmindedly. I just added yellow some ochre. like it's in there. Yeah, do I have a yellow? I'll have to grab some yellow ochre. Okay. It's not really urgent right now, but later it'll be a big deal. If you can grab it for me, that'll be. I will go looking super for some awesome. ochre. It's just right there on the table. So, um, <laughs> this is me really not taking my own art advice, which is to always really set your workspace before you begin to create a project, so you're not waylaid or disrupted by missing paint yellow ochre I was thinking there was a color missing this is just going to be a great color it is going to be more neutralizing it's very warm we're gonna like it we're gonna like it guys so one of the places i can use it is my phthalo green and my yellow ochre and we're going to come in here now i am going to kind of curve this brush stroke can you guys see that yeah I'm curving it and I'm going to come back here a little bit further. There's a bit of a curve, even though I'm going to add a bench back. And maybe a little more of the yellow ochre here. Um, I'm going to just bring this the back of the bench. See, it's just very, this is why we call blocking it in. It's just very simple shapes. And actually, there's whole artists that make a kind of a trade. Now, as I'm going to go forward, I'm going to get a little bit darker. So I guess I'm going to add a, maybe a little of my turquoise into this mix. See how that did a beautiful darkening. And I'm going to put this right here for the part of this that's maybe more in shadow. As it could be. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some blue. Because my bench back here has a bit of a blue to it. I've got to get its little perspective put back because I painted that out. So there's a little bench. See how we're just putting these base colors on. 
and then I'll get a little of my white. And I'm going to come and do the front of my bench. Now we're doing, I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to take maybe a little green over to this and a little purple. And I'm going to create a shadow. Now you could use black, but I like to reserve black for certain things in a painting when it needs to really pop in its value set. Right? I can take this color right here and come right on over to my CAD red. Look at that. And then that's going to make a darker color. It could go even darker than this for the back of the boat. Look at us go. Now they were asking, just as a, when you get to the end of this boat here, I've got yeah. some good questions for you. I'm going to come along the bottom with this. I'm going to answer right when we get to the end of the boat. Yeah. Keep the question for me because I love answering questions. All right, I'm going to come along the bottom. And then, uh, so see, I've started to create that little shadow there. I have one last little weird thing to do here. I'm going to take a little of this out and some of that purple. An interesting fun fact, if you haven't taken my any of my classes on color, purple and yellow kind of gray each other out. And it's another way to neutralize an overly bright yellow. I'm pulling this back. We're almost ready to take a question as I pull back. Wow, we blocked this boat in fast, didn't we, team? Yeah. We are team art, team winning at art. Now, I got a little bit ahead of myself right there in the bow. So all I do is I rinse out my brush while the paint's still wet, and I come back and I trim that up, and that cleans it right up. All right, let me turn around, and I'm going to sip my coffee oh, and answer some questions. You ready, babe? Boom, boom, boom. You just didn't warn me. You were like, I'm going to turn around and answer some questions. I'm like, well, isn't, oh, my isn't gosh. Isn't the I'm going to turn around the warning? I thought that was the warning. Yeah, but, like, I don't have any of these unlabeled buttons memorized. I have to wing it and hope that the button I'm pushing is going to do what I hope it does. That, it's, that uh, explains it's, some things. It's button pushing <laughs> by... I can't judge it. You can't know how long it took me to figure out to turn on the lights. You'd be like, it's a miracle she's on YouTube. All right. All right. So. Questions. Is it normal to have to do a couple layers of student paint? Yes. You why? will have to do a couple layers of student paint. And why? Three, four sometimes. How come? So transparent. It oh. just is, you know, it's a weird thing. They call it student because it's economic, but it's actually harder to paint with for new artists. I can get through a student paint. Because I have a lot of strategies and techniques for paint. And I just look at it and go, oh, it's a glaze. It's an underperforming glaze. And I just make a bunch of micro adjustments from decades of practice. Here we are with a product that's for new painters that literally makes the act of painting so much harder. So easy on your pocketbook, sometimes challenging on your experience. I do have a couple of student brands I do recommend. There's Abstract Acrylic by Senlier. I do like that one. Uh, there's Royal Talon. I do like that one. And uh, PBO has a good one that I like. Now, real quick, before we get back into it, can is it okay uh, for yeah. people to paint the, those 20, you know, you put those 20 music videos out? Yes, please do. They can paint those images? If you, Look, if you've done the Q-tip paintings with me, the real-time step-by-step Q-tip paintings, yeah. yeah, you're ready to do. Like, it, if you've like, I've done every Q-tip painting you have, please, by all means, paint all the new Q-tip designs. And those same... Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, but if they want anyone as a tutorial, be sure to vote up the iCard. Okay, but the same copyright rules apply. So if mm -hmm. you're in labs, you can license those. If mm -hmm. you're at home, you can paint them. Same, yeah. same, same rules use apply. policy applies. You're no problem. So paint and away. if you ever want to know what our use policy is, it's generally at the bottom of a video. Okay. It's perfect. So it'll let you know like what we're cool with and what we're not cool with. We're cool with a lot, though. Yeah. But always read it. It's, it's better to find out. You know how some people like to ask forgiveness? Don't do that in art. No, no. <laughs> ask permission first. <laughs> It'll All save right. you a lot of headache. So Mary was asking, what color was you used to what color was used to paint the bottom front of the boat? Okay, so let's go back and look at that again. Okay. I'm gonna turn around. Boom boom. Okay, so right here, you see this yellow ochre and this diox purple? Yes. When they're mixed together, believe it or not, it makes that color. Because yellow and purple are complementary colors in the color wheel, and that's why it does that. It. like like on question i like that question mm. i'm feeling like an art teacher today okay so i am one every day but i'm just feeling good today about it i'm gonna get a slightly bigger brush because i don't want to take forever painting in my background but i gotta paint my background in now my sky color 
what you're kind of going to notice is almost like I don't really paint with like a lot of cerulean, but it's kind of in that range. So I'm going to mix a color that's a little bit more neutral. Right. So I'm going to take just maybe like a bit of this red and I can grab a little of that yellow ochre. And I'm going to come right into my blue and those colors are going to maybe neutralize it a bit. And you're, I'm going to add some white and you're going to see that it's like a phthalo blue, but I can just take just a smidge of the CAD if I need to knock it back. You can also use burnt sienna pretty effectively. But the trick is, is that I'm trying to knock it back to that light color. Can you see how it's the light color? Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So we're going to paint the whole lake in with that sort of relaxed phthalo blue coming along the edge of my brush. And you're going to notice that this part of the lake I'm painting in with a very horizontal thought out brush stroke. Boom, boom. See, I'm sneaking in on the CAD though. I don't go crazy. I get some, I bring it over, I kind of mellow out this color and then in go and it goes for the lake. This is where having that turquoise base is really nice because it impacts everything that's under painting sort of shows through. So that's why I'm thoughtful in what I am putting underneath on my painting. And it helps my uh, painting seem more finished. The depth of color will seem better. And that's whether you're painting student paints, craft paints, anything. Coming along the edge. See, I use the edge line of the brush to get control. And this is where taking care of your brushes and washing them out after okay. every use is such a big deal because it keeps them from losing all their wonderful shape. Yeah, you, you're, you're moving real fast now, but I was those, the, you're, when you're cutting that edge, mm -hmm. you just pull right up on it. Yeah, I do. I pull right up on it. See, I load my brush, and yep. it's still that same load. I'm flipping the brush. I'll show you so like, I'll say, I'm going to come here, and I'm going to do this edge. I'm going to do it on this side. You can see I'm using, it's better you can see it because you can see it's right. a visible side that's showing there it. Goes. Now, really, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm just demoing this because the front of the boat is actually quite dark. But I just wanted to, to show you guys that where you could see it. I'm going to come back and paint that a bit dark. See, I come around this edge. And again, because we have the turquoise under there, if for some reason any of it shows, it doesn't undermine what you've got going. Now, before this blends in too much, I think I also missed my burnt sienna. <clears throat> I'm missing colors, John. I'm not Are doing you? good today. Yeah. I'll have to help you get some more colors. So I'm going to use my dark blue here, and I just want to start darkening this water. See how we're doing? And I'll go ahead and I'm going to just hit a bit of this here. I know I've got to come back with some red. But it's important to make sure that we start to have values that are good for what we're doing. Can you grab that burnt sienna for me, babe? I can. Thank you. I'm going to come here. I've got the purple. I'm darkening some of this right up to the boat. Oh, is that what it is? You might, you might. No, I know I didn't do any um, CAD red light, I don't think. I'm sorry, guys, guys, that... <sighs> Yeah, I'm, there, there it is. And you can see where in this we need a little brown. So that's where that's at. Thinking, gosh, why wouldn't I have put brown out there? So, but I'm darkening in front right here. That's the, that's the shadow. Well, really the reflection and shadow of the boat. Now I'm going to come up front. I'm going to load up with just a little of my burnt sienna. And I'm going to grab maybe some of my dock's purple right here as a way to darken it. And I will come right here under the boat. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to bring this back along that edge of that boat. You guys doing good with me? You're coming along the edge of the boat with your dioxazine purple. Yeah. And your burnt sienna mix. If you're not getting a good color mix because your paint's a little different than mine, go ahead and just tint it with black. If you are getting a good color mix, then enjoy. I'm going to bring this out. Oh, there we go. That is quite nice. Now, back into my basic lake. Basic lake. 
<laughs> my lake is so basic. <laughs> I'm like insulting a body of water now. <laughs> Why? Because we can. So just back into that basic reflective color that we've got going on. And you'll notice that I blend up into some color that I have whenever I've had to let a bunch of paint dry. Because as you may be noticing with acrylic paint, it don't blend once it's dry. You know, once it's dry, it's done. So that's an area where it's very different than, say, watercolor or oils. And one of the strategies that you can do so you don't end up with weird transitional lines is to just go ahead and blend up into an area that you already have. And that will prevent a whole bunch of problems. So I can pull a little more of this out. I'm grabbing a little more white. If I need to neutralize it a bit, I'm grabbing some CAD. And I'm kind of, see how I'm doing that there? Blending back. Now, there is a bunch of red that's going to come forward in this area. So I can leave some of it open. But we're definitely going to want to be layering. Are we good? Yeah. All right, grab a little more paint. Make sure that you've got all the canvas covered with this color. Now you've got the basis of something that's going to go really well. You've got the layers that you need. Make sure that anything that you need to resolve, you've resolved it. Like I've got a little messy area right there, so I'm going to clean it up. You know, go around. Clean up some areas. Look at me cleaning now, up those little edges. They were asking here, the tubes you're using look different than the golden tubes. They are different. This is the Sennelier Professional Acrylic Paint. Yes, this is from France. We come from France. It comes from France, and it was the like the paint of Van Gogh and all the romantic painters. There's actually, if you are in Paris, you can go by the Sennelier Boutique. You can see the pigment in jars, and you can have paint created there for you if you would like to. I'm not in Paris, so I can't do that. But that's a thing you could do on vacation, and you should. Mm -hmm. I'm getting fresh water. Fresh and I'm water. I'm putting this out here. And I'm going to give my canvas just a bit of a dry because I don't want the next part to really blend. Okay. Yeah, so one of the other reasons that uh, she, she dries so much between layers is, as she said, she doesn't want the next layer to pick up the first layer of paint so if she's going to put like a white highlight on the tip of the wave or something like that you don't want the darker colors being picked up by that highlight so you got to make sure it's fully dry now right now you may notice that at this stage it's actually kind of a nice sort of abstracted painting so you're kind of seeing what maybe abstract artists do when they're abstracting an object uh so what we have here is we've started with a turquoise uh, base right we got our traceable on we have this beautiful mix of phthalo blue, white, and a tinge of CAD uh, red medium to sort of grade out all through here. Inside the boat, we've got the front red, but again, we didn't let it be the brightest red because we want to reserve that. We created a shadow back here using our docks purple. This is our yellow ochre and docks purple, kind of graying that out. I made this lip with the CAD yellow and the CAD red. Um, this is the yellow ochre and the green. And I think this was our turquoise and our purple right here. And then we just add a little white. So that's where we're at right now. We want to make sure that we have a shadow under the boat. Yeah. That's starting to be formed. And we need to start putting in some light reflections, these patterns, into the lake. So that is the next part we're working on. I'm going to grab All a right. cat's tongue for that. And I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to go ahead and just load. A little bit of my yellow and some of my white. All right, together, very loosely mixed. And I'm going to put this close because I don't want to be turning my neck, mostly because my back be hurting right now. And I'm going to go ahead and follow this pattern that I'm seeing. It doesn't have to be exact. Sometimes in a new painter, you think you're going to have to have that exact shape. What you want is the overall sense of shape and form. So don't feel too panicked. And remember, you don't have to paint as fast as me. You can spend several hours on a painting that you're really involved in. I'm going to start here because I think that's an easy shape for me to sort of see. I'm going to come along. I want it a little more white than this. I think even. There we go. I even like it where there's a little blue in that mix. Okay. There we go. Because if you'll notice, it's a little bit. Uh... There we go. I'm going to bring this back. So I'm on the toe and then I come back. And I'm going to go ahead and come back like that. 
I certainly see a bit of this reflection that goes off this way. And it V's out. If I need a little water on my brush to improve flow, I can get that. And I'll go ahead and let the green and stuff, the blue get into that, make some different little color adventures. Okay. Now there's, there's one that's sort of coming off here. If you can paint. Ooh, I like this one here. So we're just painting with that little mark right there. Getting some white. It's okay if the blue's mixed into it. Make another little thing here. So we're just trying to see these different little patterns on the toe of my brush. Press a little harder if I want the line to be thicker. And it comes back a little bit so I can thicken it like that. Oh, see, we're starting to get those little reflections that we're just talking about into this white. It's got a tinge of yellow and there's some of that blue that we had earlier. And so that's going to be nice. It's going to help us with our reflection. Okay, maybe I'll come over here, babe. And I'm going to start to join some of this water into this reflection. That's nice. And so it's really just about finding all these little wiggly lines. Look at that. Make a little wiggly line going down. Don't rush. Don't rush yourself. Take your time. You know, you've got your reference. You know, use it as a, as, an, uh, as a guide to understand how you want to make these lines feel. And come right here and say, oh, there's just this uh, line there. Oh, put a little dot there. If I need to dip just the toe of my brush in the water, I will. The toe is the tip. You know, I can come in here. What we're doing is we're just creating a sense of light being reflected on this water. Maybe I'll grab just a smidge uh, every once in a while of the red in there. Oh, there we go. I'm going to add some of that. Look at that. Not into every bit of water, but look, I'm coming along adding just a hint of it. Just a little hint. A little hint here and there. These are little hints. Coming along, taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out, and just enjoying painting this little, it's almost like a camo, right? You're just painting like a little bit of camouflage. Every once in a while, be sure and rinse your uh, brush out fairly well. All right. And then you may need to load back up, right? Maybe I'll add a little of my ochre this time with my yellow. And I've got my white and I'll pull it over here to where that blue sort of mixed in because I'm, look at, it's just very loosely mixed a bunch of different little colors. I like the here. wave action you're making. It's fun. And again, you can do exactly what you see here. But what I find is personally, um, if I'm not spending like a tremendous, tremendous amount of time, what's more important for me is the shape and nature of those reflections. So I'm just trying to make sure that those are there, that they're working. You know, maybe there's one that's coming off here. It's at the back edge of the boat that we can see, but then it weaves out this way. And then back. See, and some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller. I'm grabbing some of the white. Oh, hey.
Okay. Fun stuff. Going to get interesting up here because we're going to get to come back and put some darker other colors in. So this really is showing you a lot about maybe how objects within, you know, these flat spaces can be constructed. I might get a little more yellow on this mix um, to create a sense of object and space and place. I like, I just like the waves. You like the waves? I like the waves. It's fun to have a wave. Coming in with a little lighter color because that was so yellow. Let's uh, bring a little bit right there, right? It's like whoop, a little bit there. We're just talking about what we've got going on. References are not cheating. Uh, a lot of people feel bad because they're like, oh, I need a reference to paint. Um, Unless you are one of the rare artists who has, you know, put your 10,000 hours in learning how to draw and render everything, um, chances are you're going to be using a reference. And you should use a reference because it's going to help you understand how your object is built. I'm going to bring a little reflection right there. And maybe there's one right here. Here we go. That's nice. It'd be a good one right here, I think. You can see it's okay if the bristles of the uh, brush kind of come apart. I sort of use that to my advantage. It, it gives me some different elements of the reflection that are going on. You know? Yeah. So here we go. We've got all that. Now, the next thing that I can do... I'm going to get a lot more white onto my uh, brush, and I can come get a smidge of my blue. See how we're doing? It's just a little bit of the blue, but it's much lighter than our background color. And you can come in here and kind of in between your reflections add. Another little highlight thing. Yeah, it's just like a little bit of a, the water isn't monotone, is it? Hmm, not at all. And so these little elements then come in and play. Look at them play with each other. Aren't they fun? Yeah. And the thing about painting is you can be so playful with color that you can take it beyond what a photograph might be inclined to give you. See, I'm just working the brush. Mm-hmm. Coming between all those little areas that are maybe a little more blue here, but still lighter than the background. Because we want that little bit of a uh, tonality difference. Okay, same patterns almost that we're getting in the light reflections, but it is with this lighter blue. And it's happening everywhere. All right. Come here, make sure that that's taken off the front. So now we have this nice, wonderful set of water reflections that are happening in the water. We've got the beginning of the red reflection. So let's start putting in uh, the red reflection, which is let's take a little bit of our quinacridone and our CAD uh, red. Here's an interesting thing about water reflections. They tend to be, they're not always, but they tend to be just a hair uh, darker. I'm going to bring this over so I have it. Um, then um, the object itself. So I always have to take that into, a, you know, consideration. And I'm going to come and get a little more water on my brush so that I can... Get these little edges. All right, here we go. There's another little face going out. I'm just filling that in.
and get a bit of your red on there. Yeah. And then, you know, bring it back here because it, it's wiggling into that space. It's wiggling in. Well, and I'm going to put a little out here that we might have. So if you see here, it's like there's a little bit that's kind of coming out there, and then we. A little more on my brush. Now I'm going to make sure I paint this in. So that looks, you know, very reflecty. All that Quinn. Rinse that out. Look at how that's looking so good. Are you guys kind of like tripping out? I love it. It is fun. Have fun. All right. So closer to the boat, we're going to again do our, a little bit of our purple and our burnt sienna together. And we're going to come right here. Making these little wiggles of that little space, right? And then I'm going to grab some of my yellow ochre into that. Wiggle the front. Look at that. And then get a little white. A little more yellow ochre, but a, a smidge of white. And hit a couple reflections here, guys. Now it's multi-tonal. So you're doing super good. I'm going to take my Docs Purple and my Thalo Blue together. And they make a very dark color. I'm going to go ahead and darken up some of this space under the boat, out into the water, like you do. You know, and that darkness can come along this red here and travel out and in. Get that brush wet and make sure the flow is good. All right, maybe a little bit line here. Look at that. Outline that little red. Just making sure we're good here. So we're looking at all that. Isn't that fun? I'm going to bring really some nice. of that dark value into this. A couple places. And let's give a look at it. Oh, now we have a nice little reflection happening under our boat. So I want to fix some of that there. I'm going to take a little bit of my white and some of my blue. And I just feel like I don't like this edge. I'm going to do this. We're not hurt by taking that extra step. Doesn't hurt us. Boat. Going to go real fast. Boat. Got to go sip my coffee fast. dough. Coffee. How is everybody doing? Really good. This is awesome. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Breathe in. No. Breathe out. Neil was asking, does the little bit of green under the blue knock back the red, or is it the red mixing? 
uh, where are we talking about? Are we talking about here? The, where are we the, talking about? The little bit of green oh, under the throughout blue. Throughout the whole thing, yes. It, it neutralizes the red and helps it make everything feel more natural. Our underpainting impacts. Pigment is, even though it may even be quite opaque, it's actually still somewhat transparent because of the nature of acrylic. So those undervalues do impact the paint that's on top. If you didn't know. Mm. Fun fact. Fun, fun, fun fact. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start the boat. All Let's right, come right go. here. And we've got this nice little, you know, kind of yellow. I'm going to go ahead and get a smidge of the purple. And I do want this toned back a bit, but I still want it to be essentially, you know, still that ochre color. So you can see we're getting it right there. And we're going to first, we'll come right here, make that little mark back. And I'm almost dry brushing. See this, guys? Yeah. I'm letting a lot of that boat show through underneath. I'm going to just make sure there's almost like a, a dash in an area and then a this. Hopefully I'm not in John's way. I'm going to grab some of my burnt sienna, some of my pad red, and maybe some of my yellow to kind of capture this interesting color by the water. See that? But I'm dry brushing right over this. And I'm going to just touch the front here very carefully with the corner of my brush. That is going to come back a bit. And it starts to darken, so I'll go ahead and darken it. There we go. See how we did? Went right into that purple mix. And so there we got that nice little transition on our boat. Now, because we darkened with our uh, phthalo blue, we can come up on our, on our boat and go, gosh, right? And then dry brush back, letting some of the darker values show through. But we're dry brushing back on the hull. Yeah. Just a little bit brighter. And I'm going to take some of that bright while I have it. You guys ready? We're going to go through. And wiggle just a touch of that into this reflection. Oh, yeah. You'll be glad you did. That makes it pro day. Makes a big difference. Makes a huge difference. So this one coming around the corner is a bit neutralized. So I'm going to get my red into that little mix that I had over here. Because this is sort of where it is in the sun. And uh, I might need some more white in that. Some highlightiness. Oh, hey, I think Spider needs a rescue. Does he? Yep. I'll go check on him. Okay. All right. I'm going to just keep highlighting that from Honey. All right. So I'm going to come right here using a similar that similar color, and I'm going to dry brush very lightly at the top here. And this is going to create, like, that sense of a highlight, maybe. See how we're just being very light. Letting a lot of what's underneath show through. And I may have to put out some more uh, white at this stage. I'm having to say what I do like is that these paints are drying out. Um, they're not like an open acrylic, but they're, they are juicier longer, if that makes sense. I don't know if you're noticing, like, they haven't skinned yet, and usually I'm pretty skinned by now. So I am quite pleased. So I put out a little bit of my white right there. And I'll go ahead and get a lighter, lighter color. Right? I'm right there. Maybe add a little yellow to it, but I need it to be lighter. And I'm going to come right in this space and just continue to highlight, guys. Just continuing to highlight. And if, my, if it's too, like, wet, I can always tap off in a towel. If I, you know, I need a little 
on my dry brush. I'll come there. All right, so now we have that nice highlight to the top of our boat. I'm going to go ahead and make still a deep shadow in the base here. I haven't even had to get any blackout, which is always my favorite when I don't have to. And I'm going to make sure that that's quite dark. Now, I'm not inclined to overly complicate any of the elements in the boat because as you add more elements, as you add more details, then you have to become tighter and more controlled in your painting. So that's just something to think about. I'm going to grab a little bit of my green and my yellow ochre again here. Right, we like those colors. And I'm going to just a little more green than that. <laughs> and pull this down a bit. Pulling that down. And there's this interesting sort of little shadow that's up there. So I'm going to definitely respect that. Maybe grab a little white into it. Look at that. Along that little edge. And then back here too, quite light. Maybe even quite a lot more light into it. Because it's very, very weathered. See how we're weathering the back? Oh yeah. Looking pretty good so far. Now we're gonna take our blue that we have and a good bit of our white loosely mixed and we're going to dry brush the bench there we go see where i go brush back on the edge brush back brush back brush back and then pull forward and there's a bit of an angle that mimics the angle of that bench there that i'm pulling forward into I'm going to go ahead and do myself a darker green sort of little shadow there. So I'm going to take my green and my turquoise from earlier, which is still wet, John. Yeah. Just saying. Still interesting. wet. It's interesting about this paint. It's You've you've commented that it stays wetter longer. Yeah. Well, considering how dry today is, yes, it is quite noticeably wetter longer, which I do like. Not too long and not sticky, but wetter longer. So interesting, interesting, interesting. Now I'm going to um, kind of blend this here so there's a bit of a softer transition. I'm going to go ahead and get into my white. I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre to make it kind of almost an off-white. I'm going to come along here. And then I'm going to come right back there. See how we're doing? You can always, you know, if you want to bring a little bit back there, like what you have, you can. I think it gets, again, simple is best. And then that's where we have to decide. Do we want to or or not or? To or or, or not, not to or. or. Well, it is the question. It depends on whether or not you need... Whether or not you think you need a way home or whether or <laughs> well, not you want to be left alone in the boat. In your painting, right? So there is definitely like right up here in, in the in the front hull of the boat, we're going to put in a little implied bench. See how we're doing? Yeah. See, if it was me, I'd have rowed out to the middle of the lake and thrown the oar away. And the oar, if we're going to do it, right, it's kind of, they're really a pain, these oars. But I'll do them just in case you guys want to know how to do them. I come here. I get the paddle out. Like this little rectangle. And I'm going to get into my white. I have an easier time coming back. You're going to come off the, off the surface back into that ore. See how we're doing? And we'll give it a little, maybe, tucked uh, buddy right here. Be tucked under here. 
Now, trick to this will be shadow. We're going to come underneath, cast a shadow, see how it casts a shadow, and we want a deep value between the two of them. Yep. And then we're going to put some very important highlights, and then we're going to boom, have an ore. Boom, have an ore. <laughs> but they're not, like, if you're very confident in your painting, or it up. If you're not, you may want to be like, the boat got no oars. It's, uh, it just say that it's like the old man in the sea, and it's about the futility of man's journey. Or you could say, this is the boat that just floated away and it's now coming back. Right. It's and returning it's to you. The metaphor. With love. I'm to the top of my one oar with a bit of a highlight. And so now we've implied that there are oars in the boat. Or what not. do we have? We have a lovely boat painting that we can sign. What? Yes. You're That's already, where we're at. I mean, Nick, like when you pull out on this, it's like... Man, that's that's so cool. I just, Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, I really love the way the water impressionistically came together on this one. It's one of my yeah. favorite wateries. It's just fun. Guys, never, never be afraid. Painting fog is the same as painting as a rock, is the same as painting a boat sitting on the ocean or a lake. All the same. Just shape, form, value, line, texture. You say that. I say it because it's true. Nice little signature. I think we did good today. Wasn't this a nice Saturday you paint? Did great. Let's take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. Let them turn around. Sure. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Give yourself a hug because you did a painting and that is a big deal. You took some time. To celebrate your creative, imaginative inner self. And that has as much value in my mind as a thousand sit-ups. And since I'm not going to do a thousand sit-ups today, it's a good thing I get a value out of this. <laughs> Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.